In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most important topics in all of college algebra, which is how do you properly simplify rational expressions. So, some of the key concepts we need to know are that, well, quite simply, if you multiply a number by 1, it doesn't change its value. If I take 1 times 5 eighths, I get 5 eighths. Any non-zero number divided by itself equals 1. We call it a form of 1. So, let me go ahead and fix this because I forgot my closed parentheses. So, x plus 3 over itself is a form of 1. And then, simplifying fraction really is factoring out forms of 1. Nothing gets crossed out. Right? The 7 over the 7 is actually 1. So, really what I should be writing here is I could remind myself and over the 7 over 7 put in a 1, a number 1. So then 1 times 4 over 11 is 4 over 11. So the 7s don't disappear. 7 over 7 becomes 1 and multiplication by 1 doesn't change anything so I don't need to write it. But it didn't disappear. It didn't get crossed out. It just became the multiplication by 1. So let's start with a, an example with just numbers, and then we'll move on to algebraic examples. We will use the same technique. So even though you may know many different ways of simplifying common fractions, we're going to use the technique that we use when we're working with algebraic fractions. So we're going to start by factoring, factoring the numerator and the denominator completely. So I create these little factor trees. And if you remember, you start by saying two numbers that multiply to make 24 would be 3 and 8. Now 3 is a prime number, so I don't factor that any further. But 8 can be written as 2 times 4. 2 is a prime number, so I'm done with it. But 4 can be written as 2 times 2. And what's left here, are what we call the leaves, those are my prime factors of 24. And that's what we'll use for the factorization. For 60, I'll have 5 times 12. I could have used 6 times 2. I could have used any two numbers to start off with. But I did 5 times 12. 5 is prime, but 12 can be written as 3 times 4. 3 is prime. 4 can be written as 2 times 2. So these factors at the leaves, again, we call these leaves because this is like a tree, but upside down tree. The leaves here are what we are all prime numbers. So now look at how I wrote these. 24 is 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 60 has 5 times 3 times 2 times 2. So I am putting the common factors, the common to both factorizations, underneath each other. Why? Because then I could see that this is 3 over 3. That's a form of 1. 2 over 2 is a form of 1. Form of 1. And 2 over 2 is another form of 1. And so I can write a big 1 over those to remind myself that's multiplication by 1. And so then in simplest form, this would be 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 in the top. And then 5 times 1 times 1 times 1. That gives me 5 in the bottom, or two-fifths. That's the simplest form. All right, let's throw in a, a variable, but it's the same idea. If I factor 3n cubed, that's just 3 times n times n times n. 12n squared, I'll reuse the factorization of 12 that we had before, which was 2 times 2 times 3. And I put the 3 under the 3. n squared is n times n, so I put those under the n's that we already had. And so any number divided by itself is a form of 1. I want to emphasize that 
these forms of one only come from factors, right? They should either be in parentheses or, or separated by the multiplication sign. If they're not in parentheses, then they're not factors and they cannot make a form of one. And that simplifies to n over four. Let's look at a more complicated algebraic fraction. We will start by factoring the numerator and the denominator completely. In the denominator, I'm sorry, the numerator, we have a common factor of 2x. x plus 2 is what's left in parentheses. And then uh, x squared minus x has a common factor of x. So I have an x over an x. Both of these x's are factors. This is a factor of the numerator. This x is a factor of the denominator. So these x's play a different role than the other two x's. These x's here are part of binomials, and it's the binomial that's the factor. x by itself, in this case, is not a factor. It's x plus 2 as a group is the factor. So that's a form of 1, and then what's left over, I'll leave in factored form. All right, another example. Here I have y plus 3. That's prime, so I'll just put it in parentheses to remind myself that that whole thing as a binomial, as a group, is a factor y squared minus 9 is the difference of two squares. So we'll go ahead and write that as the product of conjugates. So now I have a form of 1, y plus 3 over itself. And this is why it's really important for us to understand that this is 1. It doesn't go away. It becomes multiplication by 1. So in the top, what's left over is 1. It's not blank. And in the bottom, I just have y minus 3. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, let's look at uh, another example here. I need to do the factorization, so I'll do a factoring of 2m squared minus 3m minus 9. So I need two numbers that multiply to make negative 18, and add to make negative 3. Those are negative 6 and plus 3. Rewrite the negative 3m as negative 6m plus 3m. Factor that by grouping. And then we've got our factors. We do something similar with the uh, denominator. In this case, I have a perfect square as the first term and the constant term. And so this could be the square of a binomial. So let's just do a quick check. Does 2 times 2m plus 3 equal 12m? And sure enough, it does. So we could write this as 2m plus 3 squared. But since I'm going to be looking for forms of 1, instead of writing 2m plus 3 squared, I'm going to write it as 2m plus 3 times 2m plus 3. That binomial times itself. So the 2m plus 3 over itself is a form of 1. And what's left over would be the m minus 3 on top and the 2m plus 3 on the bottom. 